Good morning, folks. We have a number of key stories to share today, including from the atmosphere and from space. We're going to feed the space between the ears and hit the galactic current sheet to close, but we are starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find that the central coronal hole has developed enough to avoid visible shifts within the corona. It is now firmly settled. There is not much in the way of eruptive activity or sunspots, but we'll be watching to see if that field-aligned jet over the limb will develop at its foot point on the surface. Coming to the solar wind, we find a considerable calming of the stream. Both ACE and DISCOVER show a quiet telemetry, and the KP index is riding in the lowest ranges for about two days now. Quick news hits up next. First, the cold snap has come. Record lows in Pittsburgh, snowfall in Central Park, and there's a lot more where that came from today and tonight. Frigid. Next, we mentioned the second polar orbiting satellite, JPSS, earlier in the week, and it's important to know it's just part of a fleet. There are already a few polar orbiting satellites fully dedicated to weather imaging, pretty much just go end over end from the Earth's pole perspective. We're coming next to the tipping of the scales on water vapor. We've heard for years how much of a global warmer it is, but recently, Princeton has led the now global charge to reconsider cloud uncertainties and realize their cooling potential. We now also on that side today have the lift and release cooling action of the water vapor sitting in a position of power over the skies much, much loftier than scientists had imagined. And get this, as the world gets warmer, they say the extra evaporation makes the clouds to block sunlight and rises that vapor higher to release tropospheric heat more into space. Earth self-regulates much better than we think it does. Up next, precise quantity of dark matter is zero. Half kidding aside, it is nice to see this imaginary science crowd beginning to come to grips with reality even if it is baby step by baby step. In this one, they make a relatively large baby step in terms of astronomical science and potentially cutting off 10% of that total amount. I know 10% might not sound like much, but at the cosmological scales, that really means something. Time for our weekly pandemic news drop. How nice to confirm once again the effects of vitamin D in helping your immune system during such times. Everyone who told you to get off the beach was trying to kill you. Also, all this fear and stress is making things much, much worse. Yes, this is a new Amphib study on the topic, so I went ahead and included in today's link list the Google Scholar search links for stress and immune system, and then with the word virus added. They say, stay out of the sun and stay crouched in fear. Yeah, someone wants you dead. Jerking the wheel 180 degrees to one of the most epic YouTube channels in the history of the platform. Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille at Sky Scholar. He has been quite busy the last couple of weeks. If you haven't seen his new videos or ever checked out the channel of the man whose imaging science knows no bounds. People ask me who I watch on YouTube. Well, not many. This is one of them. Now, last but not least, in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, the bombshell drops not only confirming the Parker spiral instability waving, rippling galactic electric current sheet, but how they help to form the larger scale fields of the galactic neighborhood. The waves of the sheet ripple up and down to the top and bottom of the central stellar galactic disk. The Parker spiral matches the same shape and form as that of the solar wind within the heliosphere. And when those ripples reach the top and bottom of the central disk, they break out north and south, and are then pushed forward by the magnetic pressure of the galactic center. We have previously seen this implicated in how the different sectors of the galactic sheet had reversed magnetism, polarity flip, each time a wave passes. And lastly, since the ripples rise to the edge of the disk, break out to form the larger scale fields, and then keep going outward due to that magnetic push of the galactic center, that technically means that for stars within the galactic stellar disk, the galactic sheet forms a tremendous gauntlet of magnetic challenges over and over again. I know it looks like a lot of ripples, but when you get out to Uranus in our solar wind system, say, the current sheet does look about the same, and we're in about that comparable range in the galaxy. Now, since those fields break out again and then get pushed forward, Folks, it is that day many have been waiting for. The galactic super waves and the current sheet have come together as within the disk, it's just wave after wave after wave after wave. At this distance from the galactic center, 
They're going to arrive about once every 12,000 years. We greatly appreciate your support. Tonight, the pre-order period ends. After that, we'll need to pause book sales for a bit until we get the pre-orders out. Last chance for 30% off Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, spaceweathernews.com slash publications, and remember, the brand new Chapter 8 is all about this galactic-driven disaster. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.